Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Last time we posted about this topic, <clears throat> we got a lot of feedback and um, a lot of a lot of hate mail, a lot of uh, people sitting around uh, stewing, saying we didn't know what we're talking about. Our mantra is men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how your employer at your, you know, white collar job, your nine to five, your W-2 job, they want to keep you broke. They want you to feel like you have success, but you really don't have financial success. And they do that via the 401k plan that they provide to you at your company. Now, I know people are going to say, my company match whatever I put in the 401k up to 10%, up to 15%. That part of it is great. But what they have you invested in is a key element to are you getting the full match or a lot of that match is going into expense fees into the 401k. And today we're just going to have a deep dive. We're going to provide the information. We're going to show you the numbers where the employee put you automatically put you in your 401k. And FYI, most people don't even pay attention to where the employer put them at in the 401k because if you don't know, when you invest in a 401k, your money is invested. It's not just sitting in a money market account and it's just sitting there like a bank account. It's invested in something. And the automatic investment that your company puts you in, usually 99% of the time sets you up for failure. That's why you see a lot of YouTuber and social media people talking about 401ks are bad. They're saying you only get a 4% return. Uh, you should find alternatives. You should not invest in 401ks. It's because they forget to mention the fact why the 401k is bad. Some people just are ignorant of it and they just see the returns of a 401k and then they just say, don't do it. But we're going to dive a little deeper to explain why they say it's bad. But this is an easily correctable thing that can be done to fix your situation with the 401k to make 401ks be good. But if you're 100% dependent on your employer to care about your financial success, then you will fail using the 401k plan. Before I dive deeper, Alec, what you got? Yeah, I agree completely. A lot of people, they do not understand exactly like what a 401k is. And we actually talked about this yesterday. A lot of people think that like a 401k is some money market account that you just simply are putting, you're just transferring money to, and it's just growing interest. Not realizing that their money gets transferred to this account and it's being used to buy certain bonds or stocks and they don't know what they're actually invested in. And a lot of people can, uh, they're very trustworthy of the company that they're working for. They believe that the company is looking for their best interest and they say, oh no, I'm just invested in what the company set me up in. They know better. They know what's best for me basically. And they have managers in place to make sure that my money grows. But one of my favorite sayings that you've mentioned is your employer, why would they want you rich? If they gave you that sense of freedom, you wouldn't work there anymore. You know, if you looked at your 401k and you saw you had $3 million in there and you're only 35, probably not going to want to probably going to feel a little bit, you know, oh, I could cash this out. And even though with the penalties, I'll still bring home over a million dollars. So you're going to be very independent in that sense. And that's not what a company wants. And so the the 4% thing too, um, I agree with that. Like in the sense of, I've heard so many people that don't know what they're invested in. And that's like the most common re rate of return that I've heard from people invested in a 401k that don't know what they have. They always say, oh, I get 4% a year. I'm like, good Lord, like that is just so low for, you know, for what you could be making. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's more often than not, because a lot of people do not know what a 401k truly is, but I'll leave it to you. Right. And, uh, right. Yeah. And, and before I show the numbers, uh, I was on a call with people that work for a fortune 500 company. And one of the questions that came up was, I heard they're going to start charging a fee for the 401k 
I try not to laugh. Um, and I tried to hold my tongue and I s- said to them, you've always been getting charged a fee to be in the 401k. You're charged a fee if you're in any mutual fund. And that's what a 401k is. A 401k for the most part is a basket of mutual funds. Of course, your employer, for most people that don't look, I'm giving this explanation. They give you a basket of funds or mutual funds that you have the option to invest in. Usually, usually a company will put you in a target retirement mutual fund. Target retirement, meaning it's a mix of stocks, it's a mix of bond mutual funds that with the target date of your retirement year, you know, 65 years old. So if you're 20, you know, your target retirement date will be, you know, 45 years away. You know, if you're if you're old like me, you know, your target retirement might be, you know, 2050. Um, but those those are usually the default funds that your company put you in. But usually those are the funds that have the biggest expense ratio. And that means a lot of the funds that's going into your 401k are getting paid on administrative fees and expenses that's going out and about. And today we're going to show you, and Alex is going to give me the ability to share the screen here. Just one second. All right, go ahead. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. All right, let me know when you can see this. Yep. All right, perfect. So I just picked up, you know, a mutual fund that that's in a a 401k plan. I'm not going to say what company is for, but it's a, it's a target retirement, but across the board, it goes the same way. So here you go. Victory target retirement fund 2050. And I'm using 2050 because that'll be around the age. My target retirement would be for my age. So let's go through it a little bit. Expense ratio. So first off a half a percent, a little over a half a percent, will be taken from you on a yearly basis just for being in there. And I know you'd say a half a percent is not a lot, but a half a percent is, if you're putting money in there, that's a lot of money over a long period of time. So a half percent. Now you see Morningstar here is a rating agency for mutual funds. Five star is the highest and usually target retirement funds are usually two or three stars. So. We got that. And then so let's go down a little bit here. I think, um, all right, so here's the quote. All right, so here's the portfolio of the target retirement. So we already paying a half a percent, a little over half a percent per year for the fund. And then in the target retirement, it's showing you here, everything that the fund is doing is, you know, equities, non-US equities, fixed income, cash. And then the goal of target retirement is it's more riskier the the uh, further you are away from retirement age. And then it gets more conservative when you get closer to retirement age. Just giving you a FYI how these funds work and the purpose of these funds. So it's like a money manager for you to, you know, to conserve capital when you get close to retirement age so you can have some capital sitting there so you retire but we're going to speak on the uh, expenses only here so now let's look at the top holdings right so you're already paying a half a percent for this fund let's go back there again so i can get to it all right so you're already paying a half a percent expense ratio for this fund now let's go look and see what this fund is holding this fund is holding these different mutual funds inside of it so instead of just buying one mutual fund now this fund takes your money and buy different mutual funds now i'm just gonna go through the first one this mutual fund right here so it's invested in another vanguard mutual fund and we're gonna pull this one up then this has the expense ratio also now this is you know almost three quarters of a percent for this expense ratio Let's go back. Let's go to the next one. All 
target management allocation. Now this is a four star, but this has another expensive ratio. So it's just money going into money, going into money that's charging expenses. And we can keep going down the line here on different funds because all these mutual funds here are going to charge are going to charge an expense ratio. After it took your expense ratio before, it's going to charge more of expense, more expense. So this right here, Vanguard uh, Victory 500 Index Reward. This expense ratio is pretty low compared to the other ones. But again, it's charging you again. So Alex, before I go into alternative, what do you think about the expenses that you're being charged on a default investment from your employer? Yeah, so just based off of what our rule of thumb is, is the expense ratio should be 0.1% or less. Those are very expensive. I mean, that's seven times more than what we recommend. So here, right here, here's a, another mutual fund that could be in a 401k. Now, understand, it might not be this actual symbol, but, and this is the alternative to just letting your employer invest going to the default uh, investment that your employer provides but this is another mutual fund that could be in a 401k it might not be this symbol but what you want to look for is a mutual fund that's indexed to the s p 500 or indexed to the nasdaq our rule of thumb is we go 50 percent mutual fund is indexed to the s p 500 or 75 percent index to the S&P 500 and then 25% or 50% index to the NASDAQ 100 or the NASDAQ or funds that's closest to it. Like we said before, a lot of, a lot of 401k plans are very limited on what you can invest in. So you want to find ones as closest to these uh, different avenues as possible but this one right here is indexed to the s p 500 so first thing you want to pull up is look at the expense ratio 0 0.02 percent so for this fund here this victory fund this is 0.57 percent so this Expense ratio for this victory, and we're not even counting all the other expense ratios that's paid in the uh, holding and the portfolio that you have to pay into. Just the expense ratio just on this mutual fund alone is about 2,500% more than this one. Alex, I did that math right, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so 2,500% more. And then over time, that percentage counts a lot towards the money that's put into the portfolio. All right. So now let's go to holding so we can show what the holdings are to see that the only expense ratio that you're going to pay is this 2%, this 0.02%. There's nothing added else in it. So just like we did with the target retirement account, we're going to go to portfolio holdings. Is going to show what it's holding. U.S. equities, a little cash, a little, a very little percentage of non-U.S. equities. But we're going to scroll down. Now, this is what they're holding: Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Nvidia, Alphabet, Meta, Alphabet, C-Class shares, Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, United Health, and then so on and so forth. But if you click these, there's no expense ratio tied to individual stocks you just buy the stocks you just hold them and then this fund only turns over maybe two percent two percent a year so you say reported turnover two percent because sometimes on a one-year basis they add companies to the s p 500 and they take away usually at the end of the year so some companies like this year uber is coming into the s p 500 and then one company will leave but it's not a mass turnover Let's see what the expense ratio or turnover ratio is for the target retirement. I didn't even look at that. Uh, it don't even provide a turnover ratio here. But all in all, that percentage will go. And let's go to expenses, chart risk. 
And another thing I want to point out, you see this because the index to the market, five stars. This is, this is a better, better quality mutual fund. So it's a better quality mutual fund that charges you way less than a target retirement. And another avenue I want to go to is performance. Let's go to performance for this target retirement fund. So the target retirement fund, 15 year period, 9.38. Good. Index funds or the index 10.41. Better. A little bit better. So let's go to this one here. SP 500. So the first one here, 938. SP 500, 15 years, 14.12%. So you're paying higher fees. You're getting a decent return, but nothing special. And you're getting a lower return. The alternative is you pay way lower fees and get a higher return. And over time, that stuff counts. And you can see it here. $10,000 invested. Over time, this $10,000 invested will get you about $40,533. 10,000 invested over time will get you around 24314. So, if I'm doing my math correctly, that's almost 100% difference between the return on investment. Yeah, right. right. Alex, do you see something different? Nope, nope. I so like $10,000 invested, you get 400% on the S&P 500. This one you only get you know 216 21646 yeah. right that's the number so that right there and the thing is is don't and i'll stop sharing my screen i'll stop sharing my screen so that right there is just providing you the numbers on it and again please check your 401k everybody just oblivious they think that oh the employer got what's best for me in their mind when they put the money in there a lot of people just saying oh i don't know what i'm doing so it's better off that they can do it but the truth is nobody cares about your money more than you do so take the time take the 10 15 minutes look at your 401k see where you're invested and then make the opportunity changes that you can to give you the best life moving forward i've looked at many people's 401ks and i've talked to them and 95% of their, 95% of the employees of 401ks that are looked at, all of them are in target retirement funds that's underperforming and they're paying the max amount of fees allowable. When they could just do a simple switch, a, a simple transfer of funds, you don't have to sell the fund and then take a penalty to move it to another investment. The only thing you need to do is transfer the, the funds that's in the target retirement account to the things that we talked about today, something that's indexed towards the S&P 500, some indexed towards the NASDAQ, or if you just want to be in the S&P 500 by itself, that's fine. But it's a better alternative to what your employer put you in. Alex, I'll let you close it out. Okay. Yeah, guys, with all that being said, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.